Alright, so I tweeted earlier that I'm going to do a tutorial today on something on the most common tweeted back response and I got a lot of attention for drums. Drum programming, drums for drum and bass, drums for dubstep, drums in general, what to do with drums. And I uh, also got a lot of how to start songs and drums is an excellent spot to start songs because drums is where you get your structuring from in every single genre of music. I believe that's where I structure all my songs around is drums. Cause drums is like the rhythm, man. Jive, man. Jive. So I'm gonna show you how to do a few things, and to do these t few things, I'm using two different softwares. One of them is Tune Track Superior Drummer. I'm just gonna load it up, and there it is. It's defaulted to the Metal Foundry kit, but we're gonna go to Claustrophobic. Which is just, just the preset, the default set, and later on we can go through and change all of our drums if we want. Like, we can go there. They also have all these cool... And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this to make it sound awesome. Now we're going to set our tempo to 172. By the way, this program is called Logic Pro. If you don't already recognize what DAW this is, it's Logic Pro, it's made by Apple, it's only for Macintoshes. And we have our 4 beat thing. And you can put that little green bar and make it loop. I don't want to wait, so it goes. The default, I think, velocity is the green, and we're gonna use the green for now, and we can go change our defaults later. Right now, I'm going to make a simple drum and bass beat, and I'll show you, uh, break it down after I create it, alright? Alright, so I've made a very simple drum beat. What we have here is, these are the, the kick notes on C1, and these are the snares. And different, different colors mean different velocity, so red is the darkest, these are the total in the middle, and these are kind of like ghost notes. And Superior Drummer, in every Tomb Track drum product is humanized, so they all sound very realistic. So the different velocities will hit will actually, instead of just a lower volume, it'll actually be a softer hit versus a lower lower volume. And so far, the drum beat sounds like this. Very very traditional drum and bass, right? Now to make that a drum loop. We're going to go to our inserts for plugins, audio units, and we're going to use something called Om Forces on the side. Now, this is a distortion plugin, and the thing that's special about this one is it's four band, which means you can distort different frequencies if you want, like an e equalizer. And this basically just looks like the equalizer there, and you could bring in the other channels and whatnot and set everything at different levels, make everything complicated. And each individual channel has its own noise gate, and each individual channel has literally a million different distortion things you can apply to it, so it's literally endless. And the awesome thing about Omnicide is it came totally stacked with about a billion presets to get you started. And we're just going to use a preset and just play around with it. So you find a preset you like, and then you just keep making variants. So I'll show you what just this this preset sounds like on our traditional drum loop. Very tr trashy, tinny, and literally you can go through these forever and just. I sort of like that one, but you can tell on the side has a bunch of feedback presets that you can actually create melodies out of drums with. But if you're using just mega distortion, it actually just gives you this afterwards. Like you're plugging into a guitar amp. So what I like to do is first I'll mute my freaking computer. 
I'll unbypass Omnicide, right click it, bounce in place, new track, leave, you can name whatever you want, and then here is our brand new drum loop of just what we did. And the difference between this is Omnicide is not applied to this drum loop because Omnicide is applied to the original. So you're not going to get the feedback as you did with the original. And you can feel free to stretch that out. Uh, I can't stretch that with one hand, but basically if you just hold control, it looks a little something like this. Not control, option. Stretch it out, stretch it out. And then you made it half time. And since you stretched it out, it will distort the audio a little bit and sound ultra cool. So I think that sounds pretty rad. And you can have. Ooh, look. Oh. Actually, let's change our thing with Omnicide. <laughs> Now I'm looking for, since that one's very high pitched and high toning, I'm looking for once more, more gated on the low end side of things. Let's, let's see what we can find. something like this one so I'm gonna do the same thing I did to the last one bounce in place leave a new track mute our original and now we have this we can loop that so we have one that's half double timed and we have one that's half timed <laughs> Now this is just in my opinion, a much better, more original, sounding better way to create your own drum loops versus, I don't know, going and just dragging in the way awesome but overused Amen Brother Break, which sounds like this. Which is the most common used drum beat in the world, but even with the Amen Brother Break, you can apply on the side. And make it badass. Now again, I'm using on the side just the presets, not really doing anything fancy. I'm just showing you that they have literally endless things you can do and on and put it on anything. I love it for drums. I uh, put it on all my bass. I love it for synths. It's a great dynamic processor as well. Look, even does he even drum dynamics. We could almost use it like a limiter or a compressor. It just literally, it's a distortion plugin, but you can do so much with it. And I know I talked about it on the side quite often. But yeah, we basically made these two very original drum beats. With just drum kit superiors, preset, for claustrophobic. Literally one drum beat, and on the side made us just two very cool things. Now I'm gonna go through and actually try and make a drum beat for a drum and bass song using Superior 2.0, and I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So, we have an instrument track. It's totally wiped clean. What we'll do is we'll open up Drum Kit Superior and we'll go to multi out.
There we are, metal foundry kit. This is what we'll use for now. My favorite snare in this is the Thomas Hackey Engineering, because I love my sugar, and my sugar and drum bass is awesome. So these are all just the, the default settings. There is no presets on any of this. I think they come with presets, though. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm doing. Yep, the Metal Foundry mix, but we're not going to do any of that. All we're going to do is we're going to go to Mixer and see where it says Out 1, Out 1, Out 1, Out 1. We're going to go to Multi-Channel and see how it switches everything down there. Now what that does is you open up your Mixer and see how it, now since it's Multi-Out, you have a little plus. If you keep pressing plus, you'll get more auxiliaries. And all those auxiliaries are tracks from Drum Kit Superior. Meaning, you can edit all of this in Logic versus in Drum Kit Superior, which is awesome. Because this is where you can, you can only bust your kick to something, or you can only distort your kick, or you can only distort your room mic, and everything else could be clean. I'm going to show you a few examples of what we could do to make this badass, and what we could do to make this an awesome drum and bass song with applying use of filters on the side and whatnot to make our drums sound, to make an acoustic kit sound digital. Does it make sense? Catch you at the break. Alright, so since this is just our main drum beat and not a bunch of drum loop effects, I'm going to keep it very simple. And it's basically just kicks and hi-hats and our steady ride pattern. Very simple for drum and bass. I'm actually going to make that ride pattern a little less violent, more subtle. You can actually take this, copy it, paste it, right? Am I right or am I right? And then go like that, so it's really fast. You can have that gallop sound. And we could take the velocity on the second round. Am I right or am I right? To make it sound more, more little variants, so it's not just steady, steady, steady. More little humanized. I quite like that. Anyways, we'll go to our, our standard pointer pencil tool and open up our mixer channel. Here, we have our kicks, our snares, our hats, our room. This is, this is like underneath, I don't know what that is, underneath mic for your snare. We have our overhead, or that's our room, and this is our overhead. Now an easy way to get your songs to a decent level all the time is this thing I do. There's all, Logic has a, a master stereo out, right? You go to settings, and they have a bunch of presets for you to play with. I typically start out with the heavy master as a default, and then I take my limiter and just go to average limit. And then I lower the master a few decibels so it doesn't always peak. So that's fine for now. At the end, we'll play with that a little bit more. But I'm going to go through and do some editing. So I'm going to bust our kick to bus one because this will be or our side chain in the future for the song and I'll just apply the simple preset today I'll be working with a lot of presets because this is the easiest way for you guys to figure out how to do cool stuff because the presets on Logic are actually amazing but they add stuff like clip distortion which I'm gonna mute and then they add a bunch of low end and the EQ which I'm gonna lower right I'm also gonna lower the meds I'm actually going to do the complete opposite of what they do. And same with my kick. I'm going to lower the, 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 mid, the low on it. So it's, so it's much more punchier versus sub. Because what I like to do at the end is I'll add a sub channel, actually. Where I add an 808 kit. 808 kit's that famous kit that literally is in every song in the world. And the way I like to use it in my songs versus just the sounds it makes is I can I can drag and drop my little thing right open it up 
Have the same thing going. Take out everything but the, the kicks. Take away that compressor. Lower the level. And this is where all the sub will come from, my kicks. So the actual tone of the kick will come from Superior. And the, with the, the lowest drain, you'll get more of a full sound. Where our low end sub for a kick will come from the 808. That's a cool trick I use quite often. Anyways, I'm going to figure around with some filters and whatnot. I'm going to show, show you guys what I did in a few minutes. Alright, so I've added a few simple plugins. On my kick, we got a bus into auxiliary one, and we got a channel EQ that's killing the bass, right? Because our bass is coming from our 808. On our snare, we got a little bit of compressor. A rise on the low mid, on the low mid to give it a punch. You know what I mean? You want to feel that snare, don't you? You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it in your eardrums. You want to feel it in your body too. And then a limiter, make it so it doesn't go too loud. Actually, our kick isn't loud at all, so we're going to add another limiter on this too. Limiter will make sure it will not go above a certain sound. So watch this, it's going to be peaking. This is a kick, we'll compress it all so we don't want to cut through. I like using the octo for my kicks. Actually, the VG, VCA works a lot better for kicks. And we got a noise gate on my wire, oh, actually that's muted. On our hi-hat we have on the side, and on our room we have the snare killed and the kick killed and the high end raised. So it sounds like this. Now, I add a little tiny simple, oh great, I added a little tiny simple synth that's very easy to make. And the way this works is it's compressed and side-chained to bus 1, and if you guys remember, our 808 goes to bus 1, and our main kick goes to bus 1, so anytime that kick hits, you'll see the gain reduction come in. You can choose how much you want it to come in. This is just the glow stick preset. I opened up ease too. By default, this is on that side. I changed it over to this filter. Played around with that, added the analog all the way up, and gave it 32 voices in unison. And killed the sign level. And that's literally all I did. And now you have. And that's a very organic drum and bass sound. If you want to go a little darker, you might want to add some samples. I use all my samples for drums. That's not from Tune Track. And then again, our Tune Track doesn't have any loops underneath it, so we haven't really added too much to it. But we're just going to add some punch, so we're just going to go to. There's a. You can probably Google it and find it, but it's called Vengeance Essential Club Mix or Club Samples or something like that. And it's just a bunch of samples that I like to use that are very good, and you literally have a lot of them. Why is, see, my KRKs always crack like that. I don't know what it is. I like that one. Drag that in. Then we'll go to snares, and I have a favorite snare I always use, as of now. Snare. Drag that in as well. And then we'll place our snares. Let me make this pattern to match that pattern, and then I'll come back to you. Alright, so with our digital kicks, along with our very cool sounding acoustic kit, and our 808 subs, and this glow stick synth with the glide all the way up, which in piano roll I set to be a cool riser, and then I to told it to 
I don't know, basically if it's not connected, it's not going to glide. So right there we'll start a new note versus right here, it'll keep ex keep ascending into the heavens. And here we have a drum loop comprised of uh, two track products and uh, on the side. So what you're going to hear is the rise, the loop, the real drums kick in, and then everything kick in. Awesome possum. There is starting a track. And it's basically done with drums. <sighs> but I am tired and I hope this information was helpful. Again, if you, uh, maybe tomorrow if I'm not doing anything too explosive, um, I'll tweet again that, hey, what should I do a lesson on today? Then maybe you guys will reply on Twitter if you follow me. Okay, bye.